there you go. That was on the Fiuca. Absolutely insatiable. Right then guys, welcome to another episode of Hooked. My name's John Murray and I'm an angling addict. And today I've come down to Pollington. Uh, we're fishing on the boats. I'm up on uh, peg 412 today. Um, hoping to get stuck into a few roach. I've actually come here for a bit of a pre-match practice in a couple of weeks. Strangely enough, about half the club's here, so uh, we're probably gonna have a little bit of a competitive uh, practice session, shall we say. Right, so today's ground bait is just a 50-50 mix of Census 3000 Noir and some Bolland black ground bait. It's probably got a little bit too much food content in, but as it's only practice, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. You can always thin it out with a bit of molo soil. Maybe do uh, one third molo to two parts ground bait. Right, I'm just going to put my initial feed in. I think just for practice, I'm going to put four orange sized balls in. I've loaded that with some squat, dead pinkies, castor, and a little bit of hemp seed. Not putting any big red maggots in that. I can fish them over the top. Um, so we're going to cut that out at 13 meters, and then we're going to go out on the feeder to start with. I'm just going to pop this bit out at 13. Just cupping it to keep it accurate. I'm just going to line up with... It's not really anything to pick on the far side, so I'm going to pick the boat, the marker on the boat. And I think this normally toes off to the right, so I think I'm going to go with that boy. It's just... In it's hanging off the side of the boat there. That'll give me an idea of where I've dropped it. That's why. Always difficult to know exactly how much feed to put in to start with. Um, three or four balls. If you don't put enough in, and then you've got to top up, and then you can sort of like slow your peg down a bit. So it's a balancing act between how much you put in before you have to top back up, which might knock your, pe knock your swim on the head for a bit. But if you put too much in, you might kill it stone dead and not get any bite. So I'll just play it safe and go with four orange sized balls for now. Fish it out and then we can always top up later. Come on. That has got stuck. Oof. Made that orange a bit big. <laughs> it's stuck in the cup there. And this one might do the same. I'll just took a bit off that. That's it, they're in. Bait wise today we've got castor, uh, the ground bait mix that I'm using, uh, that's just a little bit in the side tray, just to pop in the feeder, red maggots, mixed pinkies, some squats, I've also got these uh, Fuka Neons, uh, I've got the orange and the pinks, so uh, you can actually mould these and they'll look like a pinky or a maggot. I've also got dead maggots, um, dead pinkies, just bagged up at the moment. I'll pop them in some water if needs be. Take them home and keep them for later. Uh, hemp, the obligatory tears, and the big tub of worms. So uh, we feel like going after some bream, we can get stuck into some of them. So a couple of lads have been down here already. Um, they're already getting stuck into roach on the long pole, but I'm gonna start out on the tip rod uh, just for half an hour. See if we can get a few uh, skimmers on the go. Um, I'm actually gonna fish midway, and Rob's going about 
well three quarters of the way across I can see so we'll make a start don't forget guys if you enjoy the videos give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time we upload one so the ground bait we're just using exactly the same mix that I've cupped in on the 13 meter line um, and I'm just going to fish that on this tiny little feeder start with a couple of pinkies and aim for about mid channel probably just a bit beyond the 13 meter line to be fair it's quite wide here is the canal we'll start with a fluoro pinky just see if we can build a few bites so nothing too drastic to start with Well, that looks like a bite straight away. That is a bite straight away. <laughs> Fish straight away, Rob. That's incredible. So this place is absolutely stuffed with fish. It's a perch. I'm swinging. Great start. Probably got about 10 foot of depth out there. Now let's try a big, big red maggot on the hook. So you can get a few good green down here. Whether they're sat in the channel or over by the boats, remains to be seen. Quite useful having a few of us down here for a practice. There's another rattle on the tip. Didn't hit that one. Just took a little bit longer that. Maybe uh, the bigger maggot. A little bit harder to uh, hit the bite. I'll leave it on though. I'm only fishing my 10 foot bomb rod. You'd actually get away with uh, using a slightly longer rod if you wanted to go right over to the boats, might make it a bit easier, but to be honest this rod would reach them anyway. That's another bite. A lot of fish down there. That's gone. Missed it though. Right, I think we'll go back on the pinky. There'll be only small fish. i try and catch on the caster today, particularly on the pole. quite a lot of caster in the ground bait. The only baits I'd really contemplate feeding the only bait I'd really contemplate feeding over the top on here is caster and hemp. Um, just the heavier baits. Otherwise it'll just be a case of topping up with the ground bait balls did think about adding molehill soil um, but for some strange reasons there seems to be a lack of molehills down here at the moment normally you get a lot I think because it's not super cold probably going to get away with ground bait with a little bit more food content in it at the moment if I feel I overfeed the fish then I'll definitely be adding some ted or so I'll make sure I've got a bag of that for the match day I'm probably just going to give this 20 minutes or so see how well it fishes and get on the pole and have a look on that. We can always come back on this line. Did consider setting a whip rig up, but I think you'd probably catch more fish on the 13 metre line, particularly when you get more anglers on here, it'll push the fish out a bit. And that's gone round. Oh, I missed that one as well. We're getting a few good bites here, but not hitting them. I'll just try a dead pinky on the hook. Canal looks to be towing quite hard right now as well. Certainly a lot of surface movement on it. It's not causing a problem on the feeder. There's a bite developing. Yeah, 
something's rattling that could be a roach this the way it's just rattling away I'm just going to leave it a second or two just see if we can hit it that was a better bite did develop yeah we got him small roach so a little bit tricky to it just trying to look for a bonus bream or two see if anything's there worth fishing on the feeder for of course if it tows off hard the feeder's always worth popping out anyway if you can't control on the uh, pole line that's a bite there's a better fish could be a perch dogging around a little bit yeah it's a perch it's big bone stripey yeah nice little uh, perch that so we'll just stick with the pinky for now another bite Plenty of fish down there. They are rattling about on it a bit. Uh, look like a big drop back there. Fish on. Right, I'm just going to try a caster on the hook. See if we get anything on this on the tip. Caster might just bring a better quality. There's another bite developing on the tip on caster now. So it seems fish are prepared to bite on pretty much anything. And just see if we can hit this. See if it's any better quality. Is that on? Definitely look like another roach bite. So I don't think there's any bream out there right now. Caster's shelled. He's had a good go at that. So I think uh, we'll come off the feeder rod and we'll keep it as a backup line if it starts flowing hard. Definitely fish available on that. And we'll get on the pole and see if we can catch a bit faster. Right, I'm going to go straight out on Caster on the pole rig. The rig's exactly the same as the one I had on at Kilnurst on the South Yorkshire Navigation when we fished the Bandits versus KDAA challenge match. Um, so it's one and a half gram AS8, Olivet, a couple of droppers down the line and uh, we've got a size 22 hook on right now. We may increase that as we go through the course of the day if we're catching well. And I'm going to start with a caster. See if we can get fish up on caster early. Certainly had a bite on the tip on caster, so might as well try and get on it really quickly. And uh, see if we can get the quality coming. Get her out to 13 metres, swing her in. So as I say, if you haven't watched the KDAA versus Bandits challenge match on the South Yorkshire Navy, then uh, I'll pop a link to it up here. Go check that one out after this video. So there's quite a good tow on at the moment. Once the rig gets down, it's holding and we're straight into a fish. Straight into a fish on caster. Oh, 
Oh, what is this? I don't know whether a pipe should scrub it. Uh, we're going uh, to have trouble now. We're going to have to try and... Uh... No. I'm going to have to gather some elastic here and hope that it lets go. Be a big fight, but it's, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Thankfully, it's off. It's probably took my fish as well. So I'm going to up me up my hook size now. Uh, just get straight onto a 20. I may even end up going to an 18. So I'll pop a caster back on. Let's get back out on that line. Hopefully the pike's only spill now. Just trying to figure out whether holding still or maybe just inching it through is the best way to go. It's um it's holding quite easily, it's the one and a half gram rig out there. It's a bite developing on caster. Yeah, fish on. Let's try and get him back quickly this time. Didn't want to move it too fast last time because I um, thought I may drop it off, but I think we'll get him up quick. Oh, it's a lovely quality roach. Swing him out. It's a nice little stamp fish. Beautiful. It's took it quite well down as well. Try caster again. Came a little bit down floor of the ground bit. Just gonna hold. Oh, that's gone straight over the ground bit though. As soon as it dropped in there. I'm just going to lay in and hold tight over my ground bait. See what happens when we swing it into position. Those fish might come and sat right up on top of it. Yeah. So that's going down and I'm going to bite on the drop there. There's a fair bit of flow coming through right now though. You see the well, it's just holding back. A slight dip on the float there. That's gone. Yeah, fish. So holding back seems to work okay. That's another stamp roach. I don't think we need the net. We'll we'll swing these. Swing them for speed. It's not a match. Another lovely quality fish. Lively. Can be a bit risky. Loose feeding on the canal. You could spread your fish much further down from you when it's flowing. Um, you definitely need to time those feeds if you decide to lose feed over the top. I think I'm just going to stick with topping up with balls of ground bait laced with caster. And a few pinkies and squats. Hemp. Just hold them fish in this area. Just keep that float on a tight line as it drops through and wait for it to bury. Bites are quite positive, they're not sharp fast bites on the float they're, uh, they're taking it down 
pretty confidently. Nice slow pulls. Got quite a lot of tip visible at the moment as well, so if I needed to, I could add another trim shot and uh, sensitize this rig a little bit more. But having about an inch of tip visible is allowing me to read the bites lovely, and that was again another beautiful bite there. Swing him again. Another cracking cast of fish. So I don't normally do this, but this video will go live before match day. So anybody who's uh, fishing the bandits match, you've got the benefit of seeing this session. So you should have a fairly good idea of what to expect. I'm not saying you'll fish it exactly the same as me, and I'm not saying the venue will fish exactly the same on match day but there's five of us in a line here and there's another chap down fishing anyway so that makes six so i think it's replicating match conditions fairly well just laying that rig in holding it on a tight line and that's buried oh Looked out of that one. Hit it a little bit hard. Absolutely buried that though. I'm loving that caster. Yeah, completely shelled it. Well, took it in half. The critical thing here will be knowing exactly when to refeed. You kind of expect as the feed starts to get mopped up down there then the bites will uh, increase but eventually so we'll get a bit more confident in the feeding and you'll probably get bites a little bit quicker but eventually they may switch off with the roach and you catch a perch or two and that's probably a sign that you should refeed at that point but we'll see how that goes today whether the theory works there was a bite straight away, just holding back there. Quite a good toe on it right now. Yeah, something just messing with it a little bit. Just holding it tight. Yeah, that's fish is on. Oh, decent fish by the look of it as well. It's pulling three foot of elastic out at times, this one. Could be a skimmer. Maybe a perch, I don't know. Isn't it nice, a quality roach. Net fish. Yeah, oh. So the fish are just, sometimes just holding the bait. May just need to add a little bit more trim shot on, just to make sure. Gone. That's a proper decent bite. I don't think we need to mess about too much of them. You get good bites. Oh, nice stamp roach. Nice little skimmer that one. Another nice quality roach on here. kind of session I should have fixed. The very first session out of lockdown. Um, but I actually went on the narrow part of the canal on the other side of Crowcroft Bridge, which was a bit of a mistake really. Uh, if you've not watched that video, I'll put a link to it up here again. It wasn't my finest hour, but worth a watch on uh, how not to do it. I was going and targeting some bream that day. This time of year it's more roach fishing, but you can still get into a few green down here. That's why I started on the tip. Just trying to look for a bream. I mean, it might be worth trying the worm. Um, just looking for that bonus fish. The roach is 
torch thing is so good, it's, it's hard to come off it. That's another one. It's presenting beautiful out there. It's just dipping down, you can read the float perfectly on here. Bright yellow tip on it, stands out lovely against the boats, the dark shadows. And that, ooh, just bumped out of that fish. I was messing around with him a little bit there. It's probably destroyed the caster. I'll just check that. Yeah, caster's mullet again. There we go. So I missed a bite on the caster there, but I put it back in anyway. So I couldn't be bothered bringing the ball in. And it went again and we caught. So Rob says the stamp of fish is still the same on the maggot. Um, this one's actually a little bit smaller than what we have had. It's probably only about an ounce or so, this one. So I think maybe we'll just try a maggot. See what kind of quality we get. And drop straight back on the caster. Rob's out at 11 metres. I've opted to go for 13 today. I mean, normally I, I fish that little bit shorter, but having a few more people on, I thought I'd just push out a little bit. Um, never know, sometimes it can make a difference, but to be honest, 11 is usually about right. There was no difference in depth plumbing at 11 to 13. Next year's Waikak will be on the air and colder. May not fish as well in September. Could be a little bit harder. I mean, it might be more of a bream type event, and uh, if it's sunny, it could certainly make it quite hard. Um, but today's lovely and overcast. If you've not seen this year's Waikak event on the Kennet and Avon Canal, I'll put another link to that up here. So, again, check that one out. It was a fairly hard day's fishing, but we did a bit of squat fishing on the whip, got a few fish out and did the best we could. And that's shallow water canal fishing that, so quite different to this. Right, I'll bite there. Maybe that maggot's got destroyed on that previous bite. Ah yeah, we're missing the maggot. So, big red maggot on. working as hard as it would be in a match um, probably work try and work as fast as I could but a bit of pleasure in you you want to get a good idea of what you're gonna catch in a match but I also want to enjoy my session just chill a little bit a little bit of downstream wind coming on but that's a fish on the maggot you can catch on pretty much anything, as we say. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try a Fuyuka bait. Just for the sheer hell of it. Uh, another lovely roach. Yeah, and I mean, that's, uh, that's as good a stamp as anything we're catching, really. And that's just on the maggot, so... Can't complain at them. Go on then, this will be quite funny. So let's try one of these neons. Scott Precious from Fishing Adventures Channel put me onto these. Um, I'll be doing a feature with him shortly on the railway pond in York. So make sure you subscribe and check that one out. You can find Scott's channel on my channel's page. Uh, as I say, it's Fishing Adventures. And there's some other great channels on there to check out as well. Um, another one that I really enjoy watching, which is sort of like wild natural fishing, if you like, and tapping into uncharted territories is uh, 
you and G's channel, River Foss Fishing. So make sure you go and check out Ewan's channel as well and give him a subscribe and a like. Right, I'm just going to make this Fiuka into a sort of pinky and just try and hook it. So I just rolled it up into a, a pinky form. Took half of that pellet off. It's a little bit difficult to hook actually. Um, you do kind of need to mould it quite well. Okay, that's on. Let's see if we catch a fish on that. Smell a little bit garlicky these. But I did say I'd give them a go. Scott's been using them quite a lot and he's had a fair bit of success on them, even on the rivers and more, more so maybe on the commercials, but let me try one on the canal. That's going. And <laughs> that is a fish. Well, who knew it? For yukas. Fish on. <laughs> Don't feel bad in either. <laughs> Scott, you were right, mate. <laughs> what have we got? Lovely. <laughs> nice stamp roach. Good quality roach. Lovely. Well, there you go. That was on the Fiuka. So I'm now going to try it in full pellet form. I mean, I'm only on a size 20 hook here, so it's probably a bit big for a roach, that. But you never know, I might catch a beast. In fact, what I'm going to do, because it's a little bit difficult to hook this with a size 20, I'm going to, I'm going to roll this into a worm. So it's actually quite a big bait now. I just wonder, will that take a perch? So in we go. Bit of a laugh this, isn't it? But yeah, worm-shaped Fuka pellet. They're quite big. They roll out to, you know, a good half a dendrobina. <laughs> Whether we'll catch without it getting pulled off the hook, I don't know, but let's see what happens here. If I catch a bream or a big perch, I'll be absolutely buzzing. Maybe a bit much of a mouthful for anything that's down there. That's if it's still on the hook. I think it was on when we laid it in. Yeah, so I think that's a little bit too much for them. And there's nothing on the hook now, so... Probably need a slightly bigger hook for that size a bit. Well... One last try. We've had a little bit of fun with it. Well, I don't think Fookers are bringing me any more fish. <laughs> I had one though. Nice stamp roach. Three, four ounces. Right, well we are about an hour and a half into the session now. So, I'm just going to go back on the caster. Make sure I can get a few fish. Otherwise I'll be topping up. I just switched off a little bit. There might be a pike in the swim. This is the problem. Sometimes you don't know. Fish can switch off because of the pike. And you might just top up too early. Just worth giving it a few minutes before you actually consider doing it. That's a bite though. It took a little while to get that bite. It was a half dip. Yeah, right. That's a fish. So we've caught. We're still catching. It took a little while. If I end up getting taken off by a pike, I know what's caused it. If not... If it stays slow on the next one and we still catch, then uh, I might think about topping up. Just getting some more bait down there. There's certainly plenty of fish down there. But I don't need the net for him. Right, I'm just going to up my hook size to uh, size 18 now. Um, fine match. Surely, because I can bury it in the caster if needs be, and it just gives me a little bit more hooking power. 
don't think fish are shy, biting shy as such. And we've got a boat coming through, so if I am going to top up, I'm going to wait until this, this boat's been through. We can take a fish out before he uh, gets here. Yeah, we've got stuck into a fish. The boat's on its way. We've still got fish there. See if that makes any difference now he's been through. trying to see if we can improve the catch rate and once I've topped it up I'll just give it five minutes and uh, drop back on the feeder for a little nosy. I'm really going to lace this with caster as well. I want a lot of, a lot of caster down on the deck. That's what I predominantly want them feeding on, so I'm throwing a good couple more handfuls into this ground bait mix. Obviously all that's not going in. Uh, just got to put a ball in, but it's, it's going to be caster rich. Perhaps I'm going to put another handful in. It's really caster rich. So a lot of caster in that now. In fact, I'm going to give it two oranges. Another two oranges down there. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to feed, keep them feeding confidently. In we go. That's one. There we go. See what's on the feeder. Just never know. You might pick up a quality fish. Ooh, that was a good bite on the tip there. It proper banged that. Messing about with it a little bit. Mm, missed it. Yeah, well shredded. It's uh, chewed up, is that? And maybe it was a roach. Try the pinky. <coughs> Fish on the tip. Decent bite. Rattling around. Feels like a roach. Yeah, nice fish actually. Uh, one on the pinky. Oh no, it's a skimmer. It is a skimmer. Makes me wonder whether it's worth trying a bit of worm out there. It's a bite. Ooh, just start knocking that. Not so easy to hit on the tip. One last chuck. Yeah, I would definitely say it's a little bit slow on the tip. You can get bites, but I don't know why they take so long. Mind you, we never had a bait on there, so... I'll give it one more whirl then, since the bait wasn't on. Got a bait developing here. That's gone round. Yeah, a little bit tricky to hit. And, uh, don't think I can be bothered with the feeder, to be honest. 
Go on then, who are you talking to today? Yeah, I'll talk to anybody who'll listen to me, John, to be honest, but I thought, well, what should I do without look? It's foul looked in tail, can see it maggot hanging down, it's snapped up length, just Where? so I got it oh, out. Oh yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll take it out and put it back. Can I put it back in your swim, John? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seeing you being polite now, you're right. <laughs> now I'm on telly. No, yeah. <laughs> Right, well, we'll get this uh, devil back in. It's had a poop a fight, but, you know, a proper angler has just uh, just managed to get it, get it out, John, you know, proper you're angler. You're so full of it, Rod. <laughs> well, someone asked me, no one else says that about me. <laughs> well done, mate. Right, well, since I topped up with those two balls, the fishing is just getting better and better. I mean, the stamp seems to have improved. Um, I'm going to fish it out a little bit longer but I might top up again just see how much bait we can get down on this line it may be worth putting like six balls in at start in match give it a really good feed and uh, plenty of caster in get them on that confidently because they are taking it lovely the bites are wonderful wonderful bites there's another fish. It is just lovely fishing is this. That one's dropped off unfortunately but um, we'll soon get back out and get another. Yeah I've actually gone onto a size 18 fine wire hook now. Um, just allows me to swing the fish a bit easier if needs be. But to be honest a lot of them are getting up to the point that they're, uh, they're becoming net fish now. They're absolutely buried then. It was a little bit rapid that bite. Not typical of the bites I have been getting. Caster might be marks, but I'm just going to lay it back in anyway. Just holding it on a tight line seems to be the way. I'm not really trying to run it through at all. There it goes. That's a lovely bite. That was a typical bite. Just sunk under. So you can have a lot of float tip visible here. Oh, and that fish is off as well. There's another beautiful bite. These roach are having it. Decent stamp as well. That's a skimmer. This little fish. So I've got to nip back to the car in a minute. Just uh, go and give JK his wellies back that I borrowed on the Wycock event. Um, so I think I might top this line up again before I go so that when I come back it's really got some more bait on it. Keep these fish going. the whole canal is just stuffed with these roach and small skimmers there's another great bite developing something just taking that on the drop actually so maybe a few fish just coming up in the water but that's another fantastic bite They're really just can't fault this fishing Something just holding that float down. That's it, she's gone. Oh, another lovely roach. Net fish. Just getting on for a wonderful stamp. Good four ounce fish. Better go and sort John out. Right, two more top up balls going in. I'll be back to this in a few minutes. I've been for my walk. Right then, guys, so 
I've just put in another sort of three and a half balls on the line. I've pretty much used all my ground bait now, probably a full kilo. Um, didn't add any soil or anything to it today, so they're uh, really on the feed. I think a few fish have been coming up in the water. It's got quite warm now. And um, yeah, so I'm just trying to keep them down really. Uh, could try a strung through rig in sort of 10 foot of water, but all I've done is I've just moved the olivet up about another eight inches or so just to give me a little bit more drop through uh, I'd had a couple of fish before it had fully settled on the last couple of puts and you can certainly see a few fish are topping out on the surface now so they've definitely come up with the slightly milder weather um, but yeah I'm just trying to keep them down over that ground bait I'm going to fish this out now and uh, we'll see what kind of bag we've had at the end of the day so Enjoy this sequence. Yeah, they're taking it on the drop. Yes. Lovely quality roach. Skin. Little skin bob. Still coming. Beautiful cast of fish. Taking the mickey out of me all day for not catching on tears on the trent. I'm not been feeding them. Put a little bit in the ground bit, so what is in there is sat on the deck. Not fed anything over the top. Not fed any tears. quality fish in this so guys don't forget if you enjoy the videos give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time you upload one let's try and red maggot on the hook been catching on the caster all day now see if it makes any difference 
it's gone. It's gone. Not as instant as I thought it'd be. Probably getting baits just as quickly on caster, if not quicker. Is no worse though. Still a decent fish. Back on the caster. I think because we've fed so much caster, these fish have just totally tuned into it now. Um, yeah, they're a nice stamp approach that we're catching on caster to be honest you can ring around and you can catch on the tear um, I haven't really fed that much hemp in I'll probably put a bit more in the ground bit and match there maybe try the tear as well it's certainly a, another option to the caster you're getting a lot of smashed ones of course conditions may be a bit colder in a couple of weeks time I've really enjoyed this session. I hope you have too. I needed to see the float go under a lot today, and it has. So I'm probably just going to give it another sort of 20 minutes or so now. Fish this little bit of bait out, and uh, we'll get the fish out, give them away, see what we've had. They're absolutely insatiable. Don't think you can throw enough bait at them. Gone through about a kilo of ground bait and uh, nearly a pint of caster. Not too much maggot. Really fed a great deal of that. Considering we're not loose feeding over the top. And we've just topped up a couple of times today, three times in total, I think. We've kept these fish coming all day. Oh, absolutely buried, did that. Just swinging. Most of these fish have never seen a hook. It's gone. Another beautiful autumn roach glistening in the sun. He's out in the net. Right, I'm just going to give the tear one more go. See if we can take a fish on it again. Went a little bit slow on it last time. See, I've not really fed hemp over the top. There is a little bit of hemp down on the bottom from this morning. Struggling for a bite on the tur. Oh, there it is. There's the fish. He's hanging on the end. Didn't think that had been taken. But well, that is a tear fish. Rod Black, are you watching? That's one on tears. I know he's watching because he's bleating on down to the left of me <laughs> quality is not really any different but it's definitely an option of a bait so I think I'm going to make this the last put so we can take one more of these beautiful roach could quite literally stay here all day doing this in this sunshine but the light will fade soon it'll get dark and colder that's another fish. Another lovely roach. 
and I think probably a fitting way to end it. So I'll get a bit tidied up, we'll get them out, see what we've had. Don't think I've done £10, but uh, maybe 6 or 7 It's been an enjoyable day. Well done Rod, £12.10, cracking net. Thank you. Leave this on and then... Uh, Oh, they're in twelve pound there. Does it though? It says that you you fish feeder at first for what? Yeah. Quarter of an hour. Yeah, that's about what feeder for the best part of an hour, really. Yeah. Ten seven. Come ten pound, mate. Nowhere near you boys. No, it's nowhere near that. No, they're in. There's about eight, I think. <laughs> £7.12. £7.11. <laughs> Still a lot. Can you shut up a minute? Right. Still a lovely net of silvers, even if I did get beat by Rod Black. And <laughs> <laughs> Peg Blackie. It Smashing it. <laughs> you have mate, you've done really well. I'm impressed. Is it mate? You can fish it all then, can't you? Four pound ten mate. You had a good day mate. It's been great mate actually. In total. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I don't know how many I caught to be honest. I mean, yeah, pike and all the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Nice net, mate. Well done. Well done, John. That's a right, mate. I've had a I reckon you've got about nine pound there. Eight or nine. I want to get this my act together with these nets, and I get in this. So it's all right. I like getting a shower <laughs> <laughs> in canal. <laughs> Five, two. Five, two. Five, two. Looks a bit more actually. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll just double check that for you, mate. Just make sure it didn't go funny between you and Andy. Yeah, it's five, two. Right guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, I really enjoyed that day. Catching Roach on the pool, on the air in Calder. What a fantastic venue at Paulington. Yeah, Rod Black, what a cracking net he's had there. Over 12 pound of Roach on the pool. Uh, I guess I'll have to up my game for the match. Rob's had over 10 pound and uh, everybody's done, you know, a really good weight. Uh, I think the lowest weight was about 4 pound 10 today. So, you know, it's fished its backside off really, to be quite honest. I mean, I've been messing about, you know, playing about with Fiukas and uh, tears and all sorts of stuff, to be quite honest. Just just trying to sample and see, you know, what's going to work, what's not. Uh, Rod's caught everything on Red Maggot today. Um, I thought Caster might have sorted some better fish out, but I mean, he's had some really nice stamp fish as well. He's had some quite big roach. Um, so, yeah, I think it doesn't really matter what you put in front of them. You just need to uh, crack on on the pull and... Uh, Get out what you can, well you can. There was no problem keeping fish feeding all day. Um, they've just been there, totally on it. I think Rod's also had about five pike on today as well, so I'm going to be going back down there and having to go for the pike at some point. Whether that'll be tomorrow, I don't know, because I think York Tackle have got a match on there. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll find the length of the air and colder somewhere and uh, go and have a go for the pike. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, guys, you know the drill. Give me the old big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode every time I upload one. Thanks for watching and until the next one, tight lines.